Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless. And understand that more Christians now are more afraid of the devil than they are of God. God could destroy the devil without a glance. Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, I really want to thank all of you for taking the time to watch this video, and if it isn't too much of a hassle, please do share this on your social media such as Facebook and Twitter to help spread the message. Well, this time I'd like to touch upon what a lot of people have been saying about the church, the sex abuse, pedophilia, and the devil being in the Vatican. And it's best if I share what the late Father Gabriel Amorf said about this. A lot of Catholics have been openly discussing the issues facing the church, and unlike what some non-believers who go on saying that we are ignoring it, that's so, so far from the truth. So now buckle up and let's get right on it. The late Father Gabriela Morf was once asked during an interview whether the devil can strike inside the Vatican City. Even Pope Francis was asked a similar question in another interview. Here's the question for the Pope during the interview. Several people have said about Benedict XVI that during his pontificate he was attacked by the devil, but that, despite having suffered from this, he resisted well. Paul VI in 1972 said that the smoke of the devil had entered the temple of God through some fissure. Can the devil therefore also act in the Vatican and attack the Pope? What is certain is that the devil tries to attack everyone without distinction, and tries above all to strike those who have more responsibilities in the church or in society. Even Jesus suffered temptations from the devil, and so even the Pope therefore is attacked by the evil one. We are human beings and he always tries to attack us. It is painful, but in the face of prayer, he has no chance. And then, yes, it is true that the devil can also enter the temple of God to sow discord and turn one against the other. Divisions and attacks are always the work of the devil. He always tries to insinuate himself to corrupt the heart and mind of man. The only salvation is to follow the path indicated by Jesus. The late Father Amorth's reply also sounds a little bit similar to the Pope, but I think he's even more direct with his answer, who even said that bishops who don't appoint exorcists are committing a mortal sin. He has tried already. He did it in 1981 by attacking John Paul II by working with those who armed Ali Attica, and also with the attack on Christmas Eve night when the crazy woman pushed down Benedict XVI. While admitting that it is hard to prove, Father Amorth did say the consequences of the devil's work are evident. Cardinals who don't believe in Jesus, bishops who are linked with the devil, but it is events like the pedophilia scandal the church is confronted with and the grisly murder by a Swiss guard of his commander and wife that Father Amorth used as evidence of the devil's presence. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Um, I'd like to begin uh, with something that you've said in your book, and that is that the, the, the devil is lodging in the Vatican. With all of the allegations we've seen recently of sexual abuse involving priests, do you believe that is the devil's work? Well, yes, the devil tempts everyone. He tempts everyone in every environment. In particular, he tempts those on top, in politics, in economics, in sport. And naturally, he tempts above all the religious leaders. So you shouldn't be surprised if the devil tempts those in the Vatican. That's his job. Have you ever performed an exorcism on a priest accused of uh, molesting a child? No, non mi è mai capitato. Ora i pedofili non sono indemoniati. No, it's never happened. Now, pedophiles are not possessed by the devil. They are tempted by the devil. They don't need exorcism. They need to be converted, to be converted to God. That's what they need. They need to confess. They need true penance, true repentance. That's what they need. They're not possessed. Now, you said we shouldn't be surprised that the devil is present in the Vatican because the devil is present in all the spheres of life. Uh, with all of the scandals we've seen recently, do you think the devil's presence is stronger today? No, it's a surprise. I'm not surprised. The world has always been like that. The devil attacks everyone. He also attacks people who are in the Vatican. If we look at history, if we know our history, we see how many of those in the hierarchy have been attacked by the devil. It's always been that way. The devil is just doing his job. Now, some people in the church, when they talk about the devil, when they talk about Satan, they use it as a metaphor for the weakness of human beings. But you're talking about something very real, aren't you? 
certo, realissima. E dico, se credete al Vangelo, credete all'esistenza del demonio. Absolutely, very real. I'm saying that if you believe in the gospel, you believe in the existence of the devil, the devil's power to possess people, the power that he has to take possession of people. Di liberare dal demonio. Basta credere nel Vangelo. Father Amorth once collapsed from the seven days a week, 24-hour a day, on call schedule. The table in his office was covered with small bottles of medicines, and he even said that he relied heavily on lay people to assist him in his efforts. Father Amorth even worked on Christmas and Easter, according to him. He had to change his office room more than 23 times after other priests complained of the screams from his office at all hours of the day and night. Slamming doors, overturning chairs, rolling eyes and vomiting were part of Father Amorth's daily routine. He even shared that some possessed victims even vomited metal the size of a human finger. He once said, More than 90% of the cases of people who are possessed come from spells. People with anger or vendettas seek out magicians to cast spells, and they are paid handsomely. Some might think the fact that the devil has penetrated the halls of the Vatican should make the most reverend of Catholics shudder, but not according to Amorth and his colleagues. And he also added that the principal responsibility of the exorcist is to free man from the fear of the devil. There's also something that I'd like to share with you that's unrelated to the exorcists, but I really feel what Jim Cabezel said during this interview is very important for us all to remember. Our love for God's children has got to be greater than our fear of evil, just as our love for Jesus Christ has got to be greater than our fear of the cross. That, it, it, understand that, more Christians now are more afraid of the devil than they are of God. God could destroy the devil without a glance. And I see this all the time in, in churches, and I, I bring it up. I have this movie, The Passion of the Christ, and how many come up to me and say, yeah, I didn't see that film because it's. It, I just don't like what you guys do to Jesus. I said, well, I'm sorry, did I, I didn't do anything to Jesus. I tried to show you his love for you and what he gave for you. And somehow this has it's happy Jesus. They want happy Jesus. And certainly I'm trying to weaponize you so that in the future, first of all, when you watch this movie, it shows you the warning signs. These are the things a mother needs to look for so that she doesn't lose her children, but she doesn't do that. She puts her head in the sand. I don't know any part of Christianity that says to put your head in the sand. Um, it shows you how routinely it occurs. So you're a, uh, you're, you have, by watching this, it weaponizes you to enjoy the 4th of July as opposed to when the 4th of July comes and all of a sudden you you looked one, one second here or there and your daughter's gone. And if you're going to, you, the chances of getting your child back, they're very slim. So I remember finishing the movie and I went to my sister's house and she, they live in Texas, but she wants to have her, allow her daughter to walk home by herself. And I said, that's that's crazy. Even three girls are walking by themselves. There would be vans that walk by and they have no um, handles on them. Um, that, that'll be a sign that they're looking and they're staking you out. We've got, this is not helping our children. And so by the time I was done explaining, this is back in when we got done on, in 18, when I finished, they wanted me out of the house, but I'm not there to I'm, I'm to to um, cause you harm. I'm there to help you and protect you and to under, to let you know the mainstream media is not helping you. It's hindering you, and and the mainstream media has not done a good job in well a, a horrible as far as telling us what's going on at the open borders. You know we we lost children last year, disappeared. They don't exist. They're gone. They don't know where they are. And how do you know that? April 26, Ms. Rojas gave her testament testimony to the the uh, uh, Congress, to the, the subcommittee, sworn, and with evidence. And did you notice the media didn't say, oh, she's been fact-checked? I will love their fact-checkers to meet my fact-checkers. And if the public got to see that, the cross-examining that would go on, you would say they're lying. Well, that's all for this time. Again, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of you for your continuous support of our works 
and the only I can repay your support is by bringing in more videos that will hopefully be helpful to you in your own spiritual warfare. For those of you who'd like to support our works, I left the link to the PayPal donation in the description box down below. Any amount is very much appreciated, and thank you in advance to all of you. Well then, until the next one, stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.